Hey, and welcome to Tools on Tech. Now you all know I love Notion, but in this video, I'm going to talk about why I don't use Notion for everything. I got started on this video because I posted my GTD workflow to Facebook and somebody on Facebook, Timur, asked me a couple of questions that got me thinking on this workflow that I have on my desktop all the time and made me realize that after taking a step back, this is something that I want to show to everyone. Now we're going to start with why you can't use Notion for everything. Work is usually about turning input into output and Notion isn't really the input. The input is usually Slack, email, Jira, or even worse, meetings. To make things worse, Notion isn't also the output. That's usually a document, a presentation, or something physical, like getting a tow cable to go sledding behind a four times four in semi winter time. As a result, Notion to me is more a step inside the process than the actual process. And for me personally, it's mostly a reference place, somewhere where I place the curated notes and links to other information so that I can easily reference it later. And then the question becomes, how do you keep all those different applications tied together without losing your mind in the process? One method I use is to use Para, which has a base where you use the same name for a project in all your systems. This small change of using the same name everywhere saves your brain a lot of brain capacity because it doesn't have to figure out with different names which projects belong to each other. Um, it's amazing how well that works. And I use that name in all my communication, making it easy for me to find back information when I get like a return email or a Slack message. Unless of course this person calls you, doesn't know that name that you're using and you have to play this 20 questions system to figure out what project they mean because they don't realize that you have 50 other projects you're trying to keep track of. Next to this, I link everything together with URLs and that allows me to glide through data and find related information without having to copy all the data over into Notion. Now I hear you thinking, what about embeds? And I do use those, but limited. They're a bit more work than just pasting a link. You have to think about spacing and sometimes you have to send them to a special system, like in my case with Todoist, but I do use them on dashboards and long running projects. So I don't have to open like another page, but in most other cases, I just use links. Now I use a lot of tools, hence the whole tools on tech thing. To name a few, Notion, duh, but also Todoist, Google Calendar, Google Drive. I use Toggle for time tracking, Lucidchart to make flow charts. I use Coda when I need something which is a bit more complex than what Notion can provide. And a whole slew of browser windows. Now I'm going to limit this video to Todoist and Google Calendar, else it will be way too long. But if you guys are interested in me ranting on these tools, then let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Now, let us start with the real MVP, my running mate for over a decade, and that is Todoist. Now, what does Todoist bring to the table? Well, first of all, it has quick add functionality, it has extensions, it works together with nearly everything. At some point, I even had like an application that I could use my watch to add tasks to it. But it also gives me other things like repeated tasks that come back at a set interval and reminders, not only on a set time, but even on a specific location. And then I haven't even gotten started on things like labels, subtasks, projects, and the fact that after using this for over a decade, I basically get a dopamine hit every time I just click on that mark as done button. Mm. Now to use it with Notion, I either embed it in long running projects or on dashboards. And to do so, you need a bit of a hack. I put a video up on that earlier on. I'll put a link in the description in the card to the side so you can access that. 
or I link straight to a task and then I use subtasks under that. And that's how I quickly get to the tasks that are related to some project or information. I also use it a lot the other way around where I put a link to a Notion page with more information as a comment to my to do as task, meaning that if I'm working on tasks, I can just click on that and straight go to the relevant information that I collected earlier. Now let's bring in the second tool that reminds me about birthdays, dentist appointments, and where I spent way too much time last year moving the Cyberpunk 2077 release date, and that's Google Calendar. Finding a spot to meet with people is a pain and something that's been partially solved by allowing you to share your free busy information with other people so they can find the slot that then nobody has enabled. It still does a lot of things right, like sending an email with the location, either physical or virtual, where you want to meet up the exact date, time, and it allows people to respond on that with a yes, no, maybe, so you don't spend a lot of time waiting in front of a store and nobody's going to show up. Crossing time zones, you know who does all the calculation, not only for the specific time zone, but also if it's summer winter time over there compared to your summer winter time, that's Google Calendar. And if you ever need to meet with anybody across time zones, that's a godsend. So how does Notion get into play? Well, Notion is for me mostly note keeping. So what I do is that I create a calendar account and then I have a public link that I have from Notion that I put into the comments where I put my meeting notes or any of the things that people need to know up front because they'll get an email with that link. They can click on it, get to my Notion information and that works nine out of 10 times. If I need to be able to access the specific calendar item from Notion, then I would put a link in Notion to that calendar item because every calendar item has its own unique URL. Um, it does make it a bit tricky. I spend some time copying date and time over, but I think that the benefits that I get from using an actual calendar that works together with Outlook and other calendar apps is well worth it. As you can see, using the URLs to link between different systems is a very lightweight way of linking things up. And that's by design. Even though I lose some functionality because I can't search in one place for everything, by just copying over the important data, I get updated and I can find things back and I don't waste time copying over data that I need to then keep in sync and copy over. Now, if only there was some kind of way to automate that process, like an API of some sort. Breaking news. Right, so we talked about why I use other applications because they can do things that Notion cannot. And let's step back to where we got started, my GTD workflow. Let us have a closer look on how to deal with the tsunami of small requests that comes towards us each and every day. Now it's based on GTD and as such the first step is stuff and stuff is the bane of my existence, the interruption, the thing that gets me distracted all the time. I thought watching all those YouTube videos was your greatest distraction. Shh. I'm doing productivity here, like people might get wise and stop watching my videos and start doing actual work. Can't have that now on a productivity channel. Anyway, if you look at the flowchart, it looks very complicated, but you should remind yourself that this is not something that gets used all the time. Most of the things that come my way get handled before they even reach this flowchart, either because you can just instantly reply an email to people, or I know that it's not relevant for me and I can just trash it before sending it into my system, making that the most efficient way of dealing with stuff. Now, if you have the option, I would highly recommend putting your phone into airplane mode to avoid interruptions. Of course, this only works if you are working remotely and you can effectively block the world that way. If not, then trying to find a secluded spot to work where you don't tell people where they can find you might help. At least in my case, I'm pretty quickly distracted and having a place where my mind just knows that it can focus and it won't get interrupted helps a lot. Now the rest of the steps help me with deciding what I will and will not do. And keep in mind that this is something that at some point becomes like an automatic process inside your head. And I've mostly written it down because 
sometimes I'm just tired or I just can't focus enough and I just spent five minutes looking at an email and then grabbing this, just going through the flow chart means I get like a conclusion and I can get myself unstuck. Now I'll go through two examples as a quick way of showing you how the system works and there will be a link to the full version down in the description for anybody that wants to follow my flow chart for their own work though I would highly recommend tweaking it to you personally. Let's say I get an email with extra information for a project I'm working on. I'm processing my mail so I can skip the inbox step as email is its own inbox in a way. Is it actionable? No. Do I need to think about this? No. Do I need this for reference? Yes. Is it part of a project? Yes. So I'll copy and paste the relevant information to my Notion project for later and it will be there when I need it. For some projects I also keep a folder with the project name where I would move this mail to, but that's optional. As a second example, someone asks me to send them a document while I'm getting coffee. I'll add it to my to-do list right there on my phone. Something like send Bob document about X takes two seconds and I can get back to my coffee. Now we get to the flow. Is it actionable? Yes. Is that action multi-step? No. Can I do it in two minutes? Yes. Well, do. I send the document and mark it done. Now, if I was behind my computer when I got this request, I would have probably done it right away and not even opened this whole flow. But requests come from many places and this shows the importance of the inbox when you need to get things out of your head quickly to get back to what you were working on. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch more, be sure to click on the videos on the side. If you want to help me grow, then be sure to subscribe so YouTube knows that my content is valid and that more people should be watching it. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in the next one.